Less than two years ago, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham made his fellow conservatives clutch their pearls when he introduced a bill that would ban abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy across the country. At the time, it was unthinkable. It was way out there. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell refused to answer questions about it. He said most Republican senators, quote, prefer this be handled at the state level, end quote. Senator John Cornyn of Texas insisted that this wasn't a, quote, conference decision and that Graham had gone rogue. Graham's bill was untouchable, third rail. It went nowhere until now. The number of weeks now, people are, are agreeing on 15, and I'm thinking in terms of that, and it'll come out to something that's very reasonable. Democrats are the radicals on this issue because it's okay to have an abortion in seven, eight, nine months, and even after birth, according to that. Donald Trump, the presumptive Republican nominee for president, wants a national 15-week abortion ban, what Lindsey Graham suggested, something that would apply to every state including states that have enshrined the right to abortion in their state constitutions. This is a pattern in the conservative movement now that Roe is gone. They are shifting the middle ground. What was fringe and unthinkable two years ago is now marketed as moderate. Upending access to in vitro fertilization, for example, was considered unimaginable until Alabama's Supreme Court did it last month. If you think there's a reproductive freedom that is so socially protected that conservatives could never touch it, think again. For example, here's right-wing pundit Ben Shapiro last year. It's almost a political third rail that if you mention that there are side effects to taking the birth control pill, which, by the way, many of these have been known about for a very long time, like they're listed among the side effects. But if you talk about this, then somehow it means that you are sort of an uber-religious fanatic that's how he introduced a guest on his radio show who was there to warn the American public about the perils of hormonal birth control. There's a breadth of impacts that it has, including partner selection. They've found that women who are on the birth control pill tend to be attracted to men that are less traditionally masculine, which is certainly interesting and might have societal impacts. Women who are on the birth control pill are attracted to men who are less traditionally uh, masculine. I, I don't even know what to make of that. Uh, this year, this is what young women and teens are hearing online. Having a period is so stupid, so I just take birth control and skip the placebo. <gasps> what? I used to do that too, and now I just can't believe how brainwashed we've been as women. Birth control gave me blood clots. The truth is, is birth control is going to give you a whole lot of symptoms. So how about instead we teach our women how to live in tune with their cycles? Fun fact, you are only fertile for 24 hours each month. Your body tells you when you're fertile and when you're not. If you are team them kids, but you're also team, I'm not trying to take that birth control because it, you know, it's bad for you, keep watching this video. Listen, listen to me. Neem leaf capsules, when I tell y'all that this works, babe, period, on time, every time. There's now a world of influencers on social media cautioning women against hormonal birth control and marketing what they say are replacement products. Some of them are presenting themselves as medical experts. Most of them are not. But these influencers are gaining clicks and followers while contributing to a new medically questionable yet lucrative industry focused on naturally regulating hormones. According to the Washington Post, some of this is backed by some pretty prominent conservatives, like the Republican donor Peter Thiel, who's reportedly invested in a menstrual, menstrual cycle tracking app called 28. And the online messaging may be helping conservatives push legislation to limiting access, uh, limiting access to birth control, and as access to birth control for minors is actually being litigated in the country's courts. It might be unthinkable now, but with a strong enough influencer marketing campaign, the far right might eventually be able to control nearly every aspect of women's reproductive health care. Because that's essentially what all of this is about. Control. Very reasonable. Control. In Louisiana, abortion is banned in almost all circumstances, even in cases of rape and incest. However, abortion is allowed when the life of the pregnant person is in danger. But here's the thing. The state of Louisiana is very unclear about when that exception applies. 
The obscurity forces doctors to question what qualifies as an exception and what does not. Will I be prosecuted for saving this person's life? This is not hyperbole. According to a new report, doctors in Louisiana are delaying necessary reproductive health care, including treatment for ectopic pregnancies, a condition that if not immediately treated can be deadly out of fear of breaking the current law, which could land them up to 15 years in prison, $200,000 in fines and a loss of their medical license. In one case, a patient said her care was delayed for so long that her fallopian tubes ruptured. I should, should have, I could have died, she said in the report. I really could have died. Joining me now is Minnie Timuraju, president and CEO of Reproductive Freedom for All. Minnie, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. You know, I was one of those dupes who didn't think, who thought this was about abortion and whether you believe uh, in, a, in a human life and when it starts. And, you know, I thought these were, for, for a little while, good faith beliefs. It's fully about control. It's full, the IVF stuff, the, 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 the idea that you can't be clear about who, who qualifies for an abortion in the case of, rape, case of rape and incest, it's really just about control. You know, I was with uh, a couple of hundred supporters today uh, at an event in California, and we were really digging into this exact issue, Ali, that we know— it wasn't that long ago that women in this country couldn't buy property or get a credit card without the control of their spouse, right, without the authorization of their spouse. There are women in that room who I was meeting with today who are supporters of our org who remember those days. It wasn't that long ago, you know. It was when our mothers were uh, working in the workforce for the first time. It's when birth control became widely available in society. And the fact that society has so fundamentally shifted since women got into the workforce is directly tied to the birth control pill. Reproductive freedom has always been at the core of women's economic and social mobility. So it's important to understand that that is 100 percent why there are conservative forces in this country that want to push us back into the shadows. And it is 100 percent about power control. And we don't have to go that far back into history to make the connection. Yeah, uh, there was a report about what's going on in Louisiana. Um, the, there's an there are descriptions of times in which doctors, instead of performing, uh, instead of prescribing mifepristone, uh, are performing uh, cesarean sections on women, which is wild. Performing a surgery on a woman. Uh, the quote here is that she, the doctor, ended up having to take this person for C-section to preserve the appearance of not doing an abortion, even though this is not a viable. Pregnancy. This is the dystopian situation that the Trump Supreme Court has wrought on this country. You know, we've been talking about this since Dobbs happened, that this was the natural outcome that would happen in states where we've banned abortion and made incredibly hostile conditions for providers. Uh, we knew this was going to happen. It's happening in real time. I'm so grateful that you're covering it. We have to keep telling these stories. And we know they disproportionately affect women of color who are the most at the margins in places like Louisiana.